Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are talking about some news about Tesla potentially exporting from Giga Shanghai, an updated price target from UBS, and a couple of Elon Musk tweets. Tesla stock on the day today did finish up 0.4% to $372.72. That compared to the NASDAQ down 0.6%. So despite the down 21% worst day ever for Tesla on Tuesday, following the long weekend, and the news from late last Friday that Tesla had not yet been included in the S&P index, Tesla for the week this week actually only finished down 11% from last Friday's close, while the NASDAQ ended up down 4% from the same point. So it actually turned out to not be all that bad of a week, I think all things considered. Potentially boosting the stock a bit today was an updated note and price target from UBS analyst Patrick Hummel. He doubled his one-year price target from $160 before to $325 now, maintaining a neutral rating on the stock. Hummel said that he expects battery day updates to be quote-unquote significant, and that they should strengthen Tesla's quote cost and technology lead for several more years, end quote. The note also said that UBS expects the dry battery electro technology to be likely to enable a 50% higher energy density, up to 400 watt hours per kilogram. I don't have the full note, so I'm not sure if they're expecting that immediately at battery day, or if that's just something they are saying could be enabled over time. The latter fits more with comments that Elon has made about lithium-ion battery technology, but I definitely don't expect them to be at that level quite at battery day, even though I do expect some, I don't know if minor is the right word, but some less significant energy density improvements. This is where it gets a little bit tricky to understand what the market's actual expectations for battery day are, and how those may compare to what Tesla actually announces. JMP Securities had an updated note on Tesla today as well, talking about Tesla's cash position and the potential for future capital raises, and JMP has argued that Tesla should go ahead and raise significantly more capital if they do intend to further vertically integrate through the battery supply chain. JMP writes that Tesla can meet their current capex needs on their existing resources, so their cash position plus cash flows, but they also write, quote, there is, however, a bigger question. Tesla's market value is large relative to its revenue and to its competitors. The company's balance sheet is solid, and Tesla's net cash position is now stronger than its peers. Tesla has a lot of plans, notably including potentially massive investments in new battery technology and vehicle autonomy that are not necessarily reflected in our anticipated R&D spending. One strong message that we expect to come from the upcoming battery day could be a move toward an independent battery technology path as opposed to the existing relationship with Panasonic. That will be expensive in our opinion. The same goes for vehicle autonomy. If Tesla intends to keep pace with investments being made by Amazon, Google's Waymo, and Cruise. Tesla is in the remarkable position of being able to fund investment across all of those fronts should it choose to do so. There is no reason that the company should not take advantage of its position by raising another 15 to 20 billion, end quote. So on the battery front, I pretty much agree with that. That's basically what I was saying. If Tesla feels like they need more capital, then I'm all for the capital raise if they actually think that can accelerate their growth. And hopefully the answer to that becomes clear for us at battery day. If so, I think the timing of the raise is right. You always want to raise capital when you don't need to, because if you need the capital, you're not likely to get as strong of terms. So if Tesla does need it based on battery day, I'm fine with them raising ahead of battery day rather than afterward. But I think what JMP gets wrong here is the capital needs for continued development for autonomy. Tesla doesn't need to spend a ton of money building out their autonomous fleet, like a Waymo or a Cruise or eventually Amazon with this Zooks purchase would likely need to because instead, Tesla has the beautiful capability of just being able to sell those vehicles to their customers, which is obviously extremely, extremely more capital efficient. So capital efficient, in fact, that Tesla actually brings cash in from growing their fleet. Now, the question is if this ends up working or not, but obviously Tesla is fully committed to this path, so I can't really see much of a reason to need to raise capital for the autonomy side of the business like JMP suggests here. If they did need to, certainly it would not be to the degree that would be needed for these other companies. All right, moving on then, probably the biggest news of today is a couple of articles from Bloomberg and Reuters, both claiming that Tesla intends to begin exporting cars from Gigafactory Shanghai to outside of China. Bloomberg writes, quote, China built Model 3s for delivery outside the country, likely will start mass production in the fourth quarter. The people said asking not to be identified because the details are private. They said the markets targeted include Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as Europe. Shipments could start as soon as the end of this year or early 2021, according to the people, end quote. So again, this is just a rumor at this point, but there does seem to be quite a few sources saying this, so I wouldn't be too surprised 
This would be different than the strategy that Tesla has originally communicated for Giga Shanghai. Musk was asked about this specifically back on the Q2 2019 conference call by Dan Galves of Wolf Research, who asked if Tesla was considering potentially sourcing cars to Europe from China. Musk responded with, quote, No, our plan is to, well, to source cars to the greater Europe area from Fremont, California, until we have a European Gigafactory operational. And that's, but that's probably a couple of years before. It's probably 2021 before we have an operational Gigafactory in Europe. And so at that time, we will source from California, end quote. I think that's supposed to be until that point at the end there, but you get the point. Wasn't the original strategy. Although I somehow have this vague recollection of Musk saying that it would probably make sense for them to export to the greater Asia Pacific region from China at some point. But I went back through a few different earnings calls on this and I couldn't find that. So I don't know, maybe that's just got in my head somewhere and is not right. If anyone else happens to remember that, let me know. I know he did say that they would do that for a future model that was designed in China, but that's not what I'm talking about here. But if we go back to this point, I think it's interesting to look at how this report is structured. Again, it says, quote, They said the markets targeted include Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as Europe, end quote. That's pretty weird phrasing to me. Normally you would say, oh, they're going to ship to Europe, that's the biggest market, and then include those other countries. The fact that they are putting those countries first, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into that, but that seems a bit odd. I would note that all of those countries are right-hand drive countries, with, of course, the UK being in Europe, also being right-hand drive. So the UK is not specified here, but maybe that's one of the reasons that Europe is added as sort of an afterthought here. Maybe it's not going to be all of Europe. Maybe it's just simply they're going to build the right-hand drive cars in China now instead of in Fremont. We'll come back to that point, but I think the people are going to fall into two camps here. You're going to fall into the bearish point of view of, okay, Tesla doesn't have enough demand in China to fulfill all of their production. So they are adjusting and they're going to start exporting from Shanghai. That would be sort of the bearish interpretation. Or the bullish interpretation could be that, okay, Tesla has so much demand in North America that they're reprioritizing, fulfilling North American demand from Fremont, and then using Shanghai, which probably has a lower cost to produce the Model 3 to export to the greater Asia Pacific region, which I think already naturally makes sense for logistics costs purposes, but then also potentially to Europe, which I don't know, maybe is a toss up. I don't have a lot of knowledge on which one would be cheaper there. I think we'll get some better insight on the situation once we get some updated numbers for September from China. It seems like July and August have been just a bit below what Tesla's true capacity might be, though we don't necessarily know exactly what that is right now either. But they've been delivering 11 to 12,000, which would be below 150,000 per year, despite the fact that in their Q2 update letter, they said that their installed capacity for the Model 3 in Shanghai was currently 200,000 annually. My take on how Tesla talks about that installed capacity is that that is the equipment that they have in place, meaning there would be no further capex required to get to that production rate. But just because they have that capacity doesn't mean they're able to fully utilize that capacity yet, just that over time they should be able to scale up to that and hopefully that's a relatively short amount of time. Maybe Tesla can provide a little bit more clarification on that if they do end up missing a production rate that would correlate with that installed capacity. That might be a good question for us to ask on say because obviously the more bearish interpretation would be that Tesla is just running under capacity because the demand does not exist. Tesla has said that they have no demand concerns, so I think that's unlikely, and we obviously know they're still ramping up, so that's sort of why I lean towards my explanation there. But again, I think we'll get a little bit more context on that with September numbers, and then Tesla's Q3 delivery and production report in very early October for the worldwide numbers. A few articles have mentioned Tesla building up inventory in China, this should be expected. I've seen reports that it's maybe four or 5,000 vehicles now, and people pointing to that number saying, like, obviously Tesla has a demand constraint if they have four or 5,000 vehicles sitting there in China. Well, if they're shipping 11 or 12,000 vehicles per month, four and a half to 5,000 vehicles is only a week and a half to two weeks of supply. Tesla worldwide at the end of Q2 had 17 days of supply, so the supply in China would be very close to the supply worldwide, which is extremely low compared to other automakers generally operating around 85 days of supply or so. Not every customer can just come and pick their Tesla up right off the line. There's always going to need to be some inventory as it works its way through the channel. So anyway, I'll be curious to hear people's thoughts on sort of that situation in the comments. There was one other thing though that I wanted to briefly talk about here just because I saw it when I was looking back for some information on this point. This relates to our conversation about the capacity that Tesla is building out with Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Giga Texas. And this goes back to the Q4 2018 earnings call transcript when Dan Ives of Wedbush asked Elon essentially how important Shanghai was and how much of a competitive advantage it would provide. 
And Elon said, quote, I think it will be quite a significant advantage, a really good. It's quite fundamental to the future of Tesla, and I expect to make several trips to China this year. And I'm working very closely with the team building the factory. I literally get daily updates. So it's a super big deal, and we're only just talking about phase one here. Phase one is about 10% of what we think the Gigafactory will ultimately be. So it's a major, major, major deal, end quote. So obviously this comment was, I don't know, a year and a half old at this point, but I think worth reminding ourselves of what Tesla has in mind with these factories. I mean, phase one, I think at that time was targeted to be 150,000 a year, which would translate to Tesla believing they could actually get to about a million and a half from Shanghai in the future. So maybe end state across Fremont, Giga Nevada, Giga Texas, Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin. Maybe we're looking at something more like six and a half million in terms of capacity versus the five million that we had discussed. Probably not exactly how I would forecast it, and plans change. Tesla might at some point decide that it makes more sense to have slightly smaller factories that are more localized. I mean, that seems to, at this point, sort of be what's happened with Giga Nevada. You know, we're at maybe, I don't know, 35 gigawatt hours versus they said eventually maybe 150 gigawatt hours from that Gigafactory. Maybe we'll still get there at some point. But the main point here is that strategies change over time. It's not a given but it's still important to be aware of what Tesla might eventually be targeting. All right, moving on, last couple of things here from Elon on Twitter. First one is another mention of Tesla's ambitions for eventually doing heating, ventilation, and air conditioning within the home. It was in response to someone posting about the air quality within their home. This has been a pretty big problem in some parts of California. Elon responded by saying, quote, we will make super efficient home HVAC with HEPA filters one day, end quote. So he's talked about their interest in that space before, He's definitely said that Tesla wants to do that, but I'm not sure we've seen such a concrete statement about Tesla will do that before. So pretty exciting there. And then Elon doubled down on hyping up Battery Day again, tweeting today, quote, many exciting things will be unveiled on Battery Day 922, end quote. So yeah, I'm excited. Nothing really for me to add on that point. The last thing today is a potential update to EU emissions standards. This is a report coming from Germany from Süddeutsche Zeitung, which writes, quote, According to previous plans, new cars are expected to emit 37.5% less CO2 on average by 2030. The EU now wants to bring an increase to 50% on the way. It emerges from a paper on tightening the climate protection plans that the SC has received. The plans are due to be presented next week." End quote. So something to keep an eye on, and the first thing that comes to mind for me, I don't intend to rip on BMW, but the power of choice strategy that they have, well, you may not have the power of choice, BMW if these emissions requirements continue to become stricter and stricter. Anyway, that'll wrap it up for the day and for the week. Thank you all so much for all the support you've given to the podcast. If you want to support, you can find more details about doing that at patreon.com slash Tesla Daily Podcast. Make sure you're subscribed, sign up for notifications, and follow me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you next week for the September 14th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.